Hello and welcome to Saltwire today for Tuesday, December 20th. I'm your host, Kate Walker. A heads up if you're planning on traveling this weekend around Christmas, a special weather statement is now in effect for Nova Scotia. It's expected to start late Friday into Saturday with strong winds and significant amounts of rain which may impact travel. Those who live near the water are being warned of potential warning level storm surge. The main threat is expected to be near high tides on Saturday. It's still too early to get into great detail but our weather specialist Alistair Alders will have more on this coming up in the weather section. The Houston government is taking steps to try and bring more doctors to the province. A new orientation program that will welcome 140 doctors trained outside of Canada over the next three years will soon launch in Nova Scotia. The government is investing $1.3 million to develop the orientation program. It's called the Welcome Collaborative and is being developed by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Nova Scotia. It's to be delivered with physician leaders, Nova Scotia Health, Immigrant Services Association of Nova Scotia and Doctors Nova Scotia. It held a pilot session in October with eight newly licensed doctors. The second update on budget 2022-23 was presented today. The Finance and Treasury Board Minister Alan McMaster presented the update. The government is forecasting a deficit of $142.6 million for the 2022-23 fiscal year, a $363.6 million improvement from the $506.2 million budget deficit presented in March. What our province is seeing in terms of stronger than expected revenue growth is being experienced by all other provinces. We are not alone. Many of our revenues, like corporate income tax and HST, come from federal pools, all of which are showing strong growth to do better than expected economic performance in 2021. McMaster says stronger than expected economic activity has improved our fiscal situation, allowing us to provide more targeted support to people in need and invest in health care, long-term care, housing and infrastructure and local roads today and over the coming months. Finance and Treasury Board provides budget updates to the public three times a year in September, December and as a final forecast with the following year's budget. The final report on the budget is presented through public accounts in the summer. If you're looking for a fun winter activity, the Amera Oval has officially reopened in Halifax. The skating rink on the Halifax Commons is the largest outdoor artificially refrigerated ice surface east of Quebec City. The surface is equivalent to the size of three NHL hockey rinks and the facility includes an accessible washroom, on-street accessible parking located on Cogswell Street and wheelchair access. The 2022-23 season is now in full swing and free equipment rentals including skates and helmets will be available with ID. CSA approved hockey helmets are mandatory for children 12 years old and under. Unlike last year, there will be no capacity restrictions on the Oval this season and residents are not required to reserve a spot in advance unless you're a group of 20 to 75 people. The HRM will also host a skate with Santa this Thursday, December 22nd during the 4 to 6 p.m. public skate. It's time now for a glimpse of today's Thinking Out Loud with Sheldon McLeod. Today, Sheldon is speaking with global health reporter Teresa Wright. Is the crisis in healthcare the healthcare story of the year? I, I honestly, I, I don't see what else it could be. I mean, except for you know COVID nineteen, but it's all kind of part of the same thing. Where you know we started this year with you know an, the wave of Omicron um, hitting you know Canada and, and North America and the world. And it, it changed the way that the that the pandemic was, you know, existed in our in in the world and how we we navigated around it, and and now to see what's happening in our healthcare system with all of these other viruses that are ha are happening at the same time that we have a, a shortage of of nurses and doctors. We don't have enough family doctors across Canada. We don't have enough places, uh, uh, opportunities for people to age uh, at home. Um, and so they are ending up in hospitals. Um, all of this is putting pressure on our emergency departments in a way that has never really been seen before, according to all of the, the frontline workers that I've been talking to for months and months. And for Sheldon's full conversation, head to the opinion section of saltwire.com. 
Time now for the Atlantic Sports Wire presented by Scott Squires. Yeah, 25K left. Ultra marathoner Ryan Keeping did something pretty amazing this past weekend, and he did it for charity. He ran 100 kilometers in the Ho-Ho 100K. Ryan, how was it? Uh, so we probably had like the worst possible weather conditions that, uh, that we could have expected, but I mean, we definitely made, made the most of it. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a fantastic event. Like I had, I had so many of my good friends and, and people come down and support me. And I just, I had such a good, such a good support system. And there was people coming out and running a lap with me, a couple of people I didn't even know coming out. And it just, it was, I actually kind of, when it was raining, I, I kind of, it couldn't have went any better because it just, it just really shows that you can get through anything, just put your mind to it. And like, I was, uh, I was, I was, be, I was able to be in a really, really good mood just because of the awesome support that uh, I had with me on the day. Tell me about the charities that you were running for and what was the result at the end of it all? Yeah. So, uh, when I first started this, we decided, uh, we were going to raise the first $1,500 was going to go to Phoenix youth programs. And then we weren't sure exactly how much money or how much traction we were going to get with this. So then we picked uh, Ronald McDonald House and Family SOS to be the other ones. And we were just going to split between them. So, yeah, we ended up raising like the 1500 really fast. And then uh, we ended up getting up to 4500 I'm pretty sure, is, is where it's at right now. So it was just just amazing the, the amount of support we had. And we had a lot of donations, uh, donations on the day. And we kind of picked these charities just because they're like children and youth-based, right? So... My, uh, my whole message, I just, I want to inspire like the next generation coming up to, to show them that like by me doing these runs, it isn't even so much to do about running. It's just to do with like, when you set your mind to something, anything's possible. And I, I really believe that like by me doing these runs and showing people like, okay, like maybe the conditions weren't perfect or this went wrong or that went wrong, but just stick, stick, it th stick through it and just get it done. I just think that's, that's so, so inspirational. And I just, I'm just so happy to be able to team up with really awesome charities and you know just just give back should be a hundred kilometers should be about right here in halifax i'm scott squires for the atlantic sports wire Let's, let's see. Thank you, Scott. On to weather now to see what's coming up in the forecast. We're going to check in now with our weather specialist, Alistair Alders, who's been keeping track of the upcoming storm on Friday. Thanks, Kate. Well, certainly this very gray and damp weather pattern certainly has people eager for some sunshine, myself included, and it was trying to break through the clouds today, but we will have better chances for sunshine as we go through the middle of the week before our pre-Christmas storm arrives. This evening, we will have a chance of showers or flurries, though, and the temperature will be near 2 degrees. Northerly winds gusting 20 to 40 kilometers per hour. Now, winds do become light as we go throughout the day on our Wednesday, looking at a mainly cloudy day overall, starting the day near the freezing mark. Temperatures rising up to 3 degrees for the afternoon high. Now, I do think we may see some sun try to break through throughout the day on our Wednesday, but the better shot at some sunshine will be on our Thursday. And then attention shifts to that storm for the end of the week. We will see rain and wind developing on our Friday. That will persist Friday night into Christmas Eve and then clearing throughout the day on Christmas Eve, likely to bring significant rain and wind here to the Halifax area. Specific amounts will become nailed down as the storm approaches, but certainly looking at the potential for heavy rainfall and winds gusting 70, possibly up to 90, even 100 kilometers per hour. So certainly we do run the risk for power outages in the lead up to Christmas unfortunately and this is also going to impact travel many people will be heading out of town or even just across the province uh, as we head into the Christmas holiday so uh, this will impact your travel plans either if you're driving but this is a large system the center is going to be moving through Ontario so anywhere from eastern really North America the east coast your travel could be interrupted so you will want to plan accordingly. Kate 
Thank you, Alistair. That's all for now. For more extended video and full online articles, stay tuned to saltwire.com. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm your host, Kate Walker. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.